Welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of the Garden of Gethsemane. This is a most beautiful site, a most precious time, a time when we reflect upon what Christ did as he began his suffering. Right here in the Garden of Gethsemane is where he began his suffering that would end on the cross some 20 hours later. So let's look at it together. So once again, we're in the Garden of Gethsemane and Gethsemane means press. It means an absolute press, uh, and you can see in this video uh, uh, an olive press. So a Gethsemane is actually the weight, the heavy stone or the roller rock that actually crushes. It could be olives, uh, different things that they crush, but, but Gethsemane means press. It's the rock that presses and crushes the different things that mainly olives is what they use for. So right here in this Garden of Gethsemane was an olive press. That's why it's called the Garden of Gethsemane, Garden of the uh, Olive Press. Press uh, right here. And as a result, this area right here became known as the Garden of Gethsemane. We're in an olive orchard here. You can see the uh, olive trees here. So, this Mount, Mount of Olives, which is uh, just really loaded with uh, olive trees. In fact, uh, Christ uh, came down the triumphal entry. And then the Garden of Gethsemane is just right at the base of the Mount of Olives, in between the Mount of Olives and then the Temple Mount where the temple was. So, it became Came known as the Garden of Gethsemane and how fitting it would be called Gethsemane because it means press and here Christ would be pressed beyond measure even to the point of sweating great drops of blood and the blood that he that he sweat was not just the physical torment that he was seeing that would that he would endure but he was also seeing and beginning to feel the weight of the sins of the world being placed upon him. All of the sins of mankind he would bear on the cross and he would become our sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb. Uh, the next day uh, he would be uh, crucified on the cross. So he was in the Garden of Gethsemane Thursday evening and then Friday, uh, the Passover day, he would be crucified. He would be hung on the cross at nine in the morning. At noon, uh, it would be black until three o'clock. The sun would be dark and supernaturally God darkened it. And so at three o'clock is when Christ died on the cross. And that was the exact same time that the sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb, would be sacrificed as well at the temple. So how fitting that Christ, our Passover lamb, would die at three o'clock in the afternoon, the exact time that the Passover lamb for the people would be sacrificed as well. So uh, from right here, he begins his torment that lasted for some 20 hours. And in order to provide you with a more uh, scenic uh, and more pleasurable experience, we're filming this in the olive grove just right beside the traditional site of the Garden of Gethsemane. And you'll be able to see in this video some other uh, uh, photos and media of the traditional site of the Garden of Gethsemane. So. The traditional site of the Garden of Gethsemane is located at the base of the Mount of Olives, which is in between the Temple Mount, where the original temple was, and the Mount of Olives, and there's really no reason to dispute its location. Some of the olive trees in this garden are close to 2,000 years old, so they could have witnessed all the events that took place on that dark, cold night before Christ's crucifixion. The Church of All Nations, which is built here by the Garden of Gethsemane, is officially named the Basilica of the Agony. It's located at the foot of the, of the Mount of Olives, uh, right in Jerusalem next to the Garden of Gethsemane. This Catholic church enshrines a section of stone in the Garden of Gethsemane that is believed to be where Christ prayed on the night of his arrest in Matthew 26:36. The modern church stands on the foundations of two ancient churches, a 4th century Byzantine basilica destroyed by an earthquake in 746 AD, and a 12th century crusader chapel which was abandoned in 1345 AD. The Church of All Nations, or otherwise known as the Basilica of the Agony, was built from 1919 to 1924 with funding from 12 different countries. This is what gave it its nickname, the Church of All Nations. Uh, Jesus spent his last evening on earth 
uh, right here in the Garden of Gethsemane. And here he prayed before his crucifixion um, that, that would take place the following day. And in Luke 12, 50, it says, this is Christ praying, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my, my distress until it is accomplished. And, and Christ sweat great drops of blood right here as he prayed and prepared for his crucifixion. Matthew 26, 36 says, Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not watch with me even one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And here we see a most profound example of Christ praying uh, as the temptation of trying to escape and maybe considering not going to the cross befell him. So what an example for us in our time of need, our times of temptation, as he said to Peter, watch and pray for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Christ set his example, set us uh, as an example of how we should pray instead of uh, yielding into temptation. Again, a second time he went away and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy. And so leaving them again, Again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. So three times Christ goes away and he prays with his father, praying for strength. And then in Luke uh, 22, 43, it says, And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. So you see, three times he prayed, then an angel comes to him, strengthens him, and then a third time, he goes away and he prays. And then that third time is when the sweat drops from his face, great drops of blood, it says, as he prayed, and he felt uh, all that would become, that was coming upon him. He was in great agony. So then after uh, this, uh, he was arrested here in the Garden of Gethsemane and then taken into captivity by the Jews. And of course, this would begin the procession of Christ uh, roughly 18 to 20 hours of severe torment until his final death on the cross. So Matthew 26, 45 says, Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him, came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, uh, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. This is a Judas Iscariot, and he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? Uh, we know in the Old Testament there was one angel who killed 186,000 uh, Syrians. So what uh, 12 legions uh, could do is absolutely uh, unbelievable. So Christ says, you do not think that my father, he will at once send me uh, more than 12 legions? <laughs> uh, so they could wipe out the whole planet of people. 
but how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? And so once again, Christ is referring back uh, to prophecy, uh, once again, fulfilling prophecy after prophecy so that it might be, fu be fulfilled, he says over and over again. And at that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not seize me. And the temple was just located just right across the Kidron Valley. I can see it from right here behind me and you'll see pictures of it as well. And a day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and did, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. They abandoned him. So, what can we observe and learn from these events that took place right here in the Garden of uh, Gethsemane? Well, Gethsemane means olive press or just press. It was an olive orchard with an olive press in it. As a result, it became known as the Garden of Gethsemane. And how fitting it would be called Gethsemane, which means press, as Christ would be pressed here beyond measure, even to the point of sweating great drops of blood. And Jesus spent his last evening on earth here praying before his crucifixion the following day. And Christ sweat great drops of blood here as he prayed and prepared for his uh, crucifixion. And he was arrested here and taken captive by the Jews. And the spiritual weight of the sins of the world that Christ suffered was far greater than the physical suffering on the cross. And it was the weight of the enormous cost to the extent of sweating great drops of blood that Christ suffered as he prepared for the cross. And the suffering of Christ pays for the sins of all who will put their faith and trust in him. And I would say this humbly, if there is no hell, if there is no literal hell, then all of Christ's sufferings is in vain. And how wrong that would be. There is a literal hell and Christ came to save us from it. And so once again, if it does not exist, then what did Christ die for? What was all the suffering for? Well, maybe just a good example, but it was far more than that. He died on the cross, the scripture says, to become our Passover lamb, our eternal sacrifice once and for all. So this causes me to, to reflect and ask myself a couple of questions. Have I really contemplated the price that Christ paid, that he went through to pay for my sins? Do I understand the love, the depth of Christ's love and his longing to be reconciled to me and have a relationship to me so that he would undergo all of this suffering? And do I love him and obey him with all of my heart? And am I his, am I his true disciple, uh, following him, willing to undergo persecution, suffering, whatever my Lord might ask me? And in the same way that Christ put us first, as he died on the cross, and looking to the joy set before him, it says in Hebrews, he endured the cross. How about me? Do I put Christ first in my life? Is he the first thing in my life? Or is he second or third? Or when he's a convenient thing for me? Or when he can just help me and it makes me better? So anyway, uh, some things to really think about in this video here in Gethsemane, which means press or all of press, where Christ gr sweat great drops of blood and prepared for the 20 hours of crucifixion and suffering that would wait him ahead. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Maybe it's been a little bit enlightening. And uh, thank you for watching this and God bless.